Hey you guys, and welcome back to Rams Games for a quick look at the game Seraph. I'm going to do my best to explain this really quickly and hopefully efficiently. So Seraph is a platformer game that has procedurally generated levels. It has a challenge mode and it has some other stuff like speed running and other things like that that generate seeds so the levels you can share seeds and stuff like that I don't know how to input those I don't really care about speed running mode anyways there is a story try not to read it if you don't want spoilers I hope the audio is okay like it seemed really quiet on stream so let's just hope that it's alright but whatever I'm only gonna be doing this in 30 FPS I can't handle 60 for some reason and there's some screen tearing going on. This is an early access game that came out the other day. It's fully playable for what it is. I've never seen this guy before. I threw that the wrong way. It's not strats. We're in a lockdown. It's going to last a minute too, which is great. At least he's out there. So you start off with a basic weapon. It's your pistols mark whatever. You start off with pistols mark one. Through gathering uh, pieces and bits from fallen enemies, you can further craft your levels, your weapons to different levels. I might die here. I'm at 4.26 difficulty from a stream that I had. Uh, it was just a test stream to see if the whole Twitch mode works. This game does have Twitch integration. I'm always throwing out the wrong direction now, apparently. Great. I died. Wow. Um, that's fine. I've collected enough to craft Assault Rifle Mark II. Tell you what, I'm going to quit the game, go back to the main menu, <laughs> and show you a couple things if the game doesn't crash here. Alright, it didn't decide to crash. So, I'll first go into the transmutation menu. This is your crafting menu. You start off with all this stuff right here. If you go into your miracles, um, right after the tutorial you get enough crafting recipes if you go one or two floors further to get the demon site. I know it says daemon, but they refer to daemons as demons in other spellings. So instead of saying a daemon site, I'm just going to call them demons. Anyways, you unlock daemon site allowing Seraph to see and collect various materials from the corpses of the Terminide demons for use in crafting and upgrading weapons and protect wards. That's done. All the crafting materials are on the right. You have the first five rows are, that's rows left to right, are crafting materials and the last two are a specific crystal you get, which are the epic and supreme. You get those by um, collecting three fragments for the common and then every three lithios common crystals you get, which is nine fragments. You can upgrade that into one Oteos or whatever. Uncommon, then you can take three of those uncommons, make them a rare, and so on. So you can see right here, you need 540 uh, fragments, which the Lithios is made of three of those. While well, you have the orange worth down there. And those can be augmented into oaths. Oaths are your passives. So right here under the mu, you have attack, which is munitions, defensive, and then holy, which is magic. So attack, defense, and magic. Uh, things like split fire. You can see that putting an uncommon crystal in this gave me a 10% bonus. A common would just give you just 5, which I don't have any right now. And then you can see that a rare gave me 6% bonus on the critical accuracy. So instead of a 2% chance to fire a critical shot, I have a 6% chance. The max is a 10% chance. So as you fight, you'll get crystal fragments, and as you get those, you can upgrade those. The transmutation thing is just your weapons. I've got the pistols Mark II, which is an upgraded version of the infinite weapon pistol. And then I can make like the assault rifle, the railgun, the whatever. I'm not going to upgrade those. No reason not to. I prefer the... Personally, I prefer the revolvers. Uh, that's not everyone's favorite, and that's fine. 
Both ruby and sapphire gemstones. Interesting. To make the amethyst ring, I'll hold A to craft. You can see that I've crafted the amethyst ring, amethyst. Enhanced boarding items offer the wearer ink. The combined protection of both the ruby and sapphire gemstones. Increased physical and unholy protection. So that's a high defensive item that you can find in lockers throughout the game. Uh, let's just make the auto pistols mark one. It's like having two SMGs. That's all it is. High fire rate, low damage, low accuracy. Let's go into a new game. You can see that we have Twitch mode. Uh, what this does is you... Every level, once every level, you have a vote. They can go through at the end of level. When you go through the doors, the vote cancels. No one can vote. And once you start the next level, you have a... The result of two choices. People can either type uh, hashtag good or hashtag evil. The good one will give you a buff, and the evil will, the bad one, will give you a debuff. It's really cool, it pings your chat, it tells you in chat what's happening, and it tells you on screen as well. It tells you what percentage the votes were. Kinda cool. But then you also have standard. Hard. Starts you out at 3.0. You just saw me fighting at a 4.25. Standard starts you out at like 0. The difficulty will increase throughout the game, there is no way to lower it without completely dying and gaming over. So at extreme you start off at 7.0 difficulty. Which is really hard. I can barely make it through the 4 that I'm going through. This is my first time. It's going to take a little bit. A little bit of learning. It also helps grinding new things and new passives and stuff like that. But there's some other mechanics we'll get to in game. You see the speed run here, you have a current seed down at the bottom. I don't know how you would type that in or give it to someone else. I really don't. But I mean... Apparently I'm doing a speedrun. I didn't mean to do that. And I'm not going to, either. I'm going to quit back to the main. Shut up. Come on, give me the pause menu. Quit the game. Anyways. I'm just going to show you what it's like to start out on standard, give you the most basic experience that you're going to get. If you want to see the higher difficulties, uh, go to a different video. This is just a quick look at. So you got some story stuff here. I'm not going to go through it. You want to know the story. Watch someone like Yeti play it. Because he has four episodes on this at the time of recording this, and I'm not him. I'm not his channel. I just want to show... Show off this game, not enough people are playing it, I want more people to play it, so I'm going to show it off. This is a controller based game, you can use your keyboard, but it does not work nearly as well because you have more degrees of freedom with your analog sticks. Just keep that in mind if you want to play and you don't have the controller, it's playable, but you have more accuracy with your blinks. When you kill an enemy, any shots that they have personally got out on the field will disappear. So if you have a projectile coming right at you, you can choose to blink to avoid it, or simply kill the enemy. These little totem things are experience that I'm collecting throughout the thing. They're referred to as totems, so we're going to call them totems. There is a level up system. And if anyone's ever played Nuclear Throne or anything like that, when you level up, you actually get kind of get one of four buffs. You can choose to lock in four different kinds of buffs, or you can level up that buff up to level five. Hopefully, in the quick look at that I do, I'm playing really sloppy. I'm sorry. I'm actually not really focusing too much on the game. Also, this is a boss. He has three tiers of health. Every time we knock him down to that, we have to use our X ability, which is smite, to do that to him before he can revive. I don't know why that fired to the left. Maybe I was holding left, I don't know. And there you go. When you flash, you are invulnerable for as long as you're glow uh, glowing. You can see over on the right I'm collecting a bunch of crafting materials from that guy's body. Once you defeat the boss, or the objective of the level, the door will unlock as you can see there. You can continue going around doing stuff to find crates like this. These crates have a little bit of XP, generally 500 in the yellow ones, more in the blue ones. The yellow ones are for like, tiny bits of XP and health. Normally, sometimes there's no health in them, which is sad and unfortunate, but it happens. 
there is no map for this game. So you're kind of going in blindly. You can choose to look for more things, which can be more things to fight, more chances to die, but more XP. Risk reward. We're just going to go through. Going to skip the story again. No spoilers. You can see that I have shard value of 1 retrieved, so we only got like a part of a crystal shard. Every 3 is a common crystal. See that we have XP. If I go to current blessings, you can see that I have none. If I level up, we will get blessings. So every level up, you get new blessings. Up to 4, once you choose 1, it's locked in. Until you game over, which is a total of death 3 times. And then as you pick them... You know, the fewer empty slots you have, the less chance you are to get more of a variety of things to pick from. Sometimes you just have to level up one that you want because you don't want to pick one that you don't want. Let's continue. Maybe we'll get the XP on the next level. I don't want to make this longer than a 15 minute episode, so I will try to rush through this next floor, kill everything as we go. Ignore the story again. It's probably better to save the yellow crates for when you need the health. But we didn't. It's nice to wreck things. Uh, I will be a little bit stronger than anyone normally would be starting off the game. That's because my starter pistols are of a higher level than the ones that you start out with. This is a locker. Contains auto pistols mark 1. Once you gain a certain ability from your mutations or whatever, you can scrap this into metal parts. Always metal parts, but I'll take it since I don't have a secondary gun. You can switch that with the right mouse button. I don't know what the keyboard controls are, so you'll have to forgive me on that one. Now you can see right here on screen, I have 14 seconds to get to this gate. It will always point to where it is. I just use that little yellow switch pad over there. Once you pass it, Oh, you're free to enter and leave as you wish. These are kind of bonus rooms. That right there gives you a checkpoint, so when you die, instead of starting at the entrance to the floor, you start off in this room. Generally closer to your objective, although maybe not in this case. You generally have some chests and maybe a locker or two. Uh, it differs. That ring right there offers me max health of 80. Uh, that counter underneath my health is 40. I have 40 hits before that ring breaks. 40 hits to myself. This right here is an attack buff. So I now do double damage for the duration of this thing. You can see it's pretty strong, especially using the auto pistols, which are two SMGs. In the faces of things. Not the most accurate thing in the world. But it does allow me to attack up to two things at once. Just like the pistols. Because it is dual wielding. Hit X on those guys to kill them before they can respawn. The X thing right here is smite. It kills them. Y is I don't know what it's called. But it kind of does like a little poof around you. It knocks away projectiles and enemies that can be knocked away. The game is definitely more acrobatic, because all the aiming is done automatically when I shoot. It automatically locks on up to two targets. If you want to focus, you can tap your... I didn't mean to do that. You can tap your analog stick, and it will lock on an enemy for you, thereby focusing all your firepower towards that target. Not the most useful. I accidentally hit that wall there. Some floors you can shoot through, like this one. If I can do things like that, hit him. He could hit me if he wanted to, but... This is a sector lockdown, so it's going to last... 40 seconds. This is where the doors lock you in. You have no choice but to fight. At 1.50 difficulty, it's not... I jumped right into that like an idiot. It's not that bad. Like, it's... It's fairly easy unless you get careless with it. The game is by no means a bullet hell. But, it can get crazy. You can get overwhelmed depending on your weapons. Uh... 
depending on the enemies. They get much harder. A lot more variety, a lot more things that you need to dash away from. Staying airborne is generally your friend. So you can see the doors have opened, the lockdown has ended. There's nothing in here to benefit from. It just it was a trap, basically. Sometimes going through these corridors can cause the doors to close. And for that to happen. The symbol you're seeing that I'm chasing the little arrow on screen is telling me to go to the boss. We'll fight everything along the way. And we will probably end the episode there. There's really nothing else to talk about, really. Uh, Twitch mode is really fun. I'm going to be streaming that a lot more. Letting my Twitch viewers have more control over what happens, whether I get bonuses or get completely screwed. <laughs> my friend kept giving me... We were testing it out, it was just testing, so we were doing different combinations of things. Uh, turns out if you vote twice, like if you vote evil and then good, your vote is then in as good. So you can re-vote before the voting is done. Not limited to one vote per person, but your vote doesn't count twice. It counts once is the last command that you input. So that's something for anyone who plans on voting for myself or anyone else, just to keep that in mind. This is the boss because he has his little health bars. I didn't hit him with that deflected attack, I don't know if that would do any damage, but... Dodge through that. Smite him, save up my dodges. My dodges are those two little bars underneath my uh, level up at the top. See the right, we got two out of three guard fragments. Open this up. Got a bunch of ammo from that 124 auto pistol ammos. Yeah, so the game's pretty fun. Uh, it's definitely different. Like, you know, we've all seen 2D platformers, but. It's definitely dynamic in that you can do the Twitch mode thing, you can do the speedruns, you can do the daily challenges, excuse me. And all that jazz. And the increasing difficulty is kind of like uh, Risk of Rain, if you will. It's got the dynamic difficulties. As far as I know, the difficulty keeps going up. Harder enemies. Uh, a little bit varied attacks. This is that switch you would use, by the way. It'd normally be yellow, but it's green because I passed through the exit. And boom. Skip story, don't want to spoil anything for anyone. So that's just a quick look at Seraph, the game that I've been playing off camera, and I'm going to be streaming quite a bit more. I'll show you the blessings real quick. This screen will automatically come up before you can save an exit, so that's good. Right here, Demonic Litany. Increase XP earned from the moats dropped by demons by 10%. This rewards you more the earlier you have it. So I would unlock that, personally. Because this kind of just pays for itself. If you get this on your first level up or whatever, then you're going to have 10% more XP for the entire rest of your run. Healing Exorcism is my second choice. Like, that I'd personally choose, not literally a second choice. Smite attacks on regenerating demons will heal Seraph by 5%. So when I use Smite to finish off an enemy, which is when they have the big old X thing over it, and that kills them, I regenerate 5-8% health. I'm assuming that's 5% of Seraph's health and not the demon's health. Kind of unclear on that. 5% of her max health. Uh, Blessed Ammunition. Blessed ammunition, or blessed, eh, you can say the same thing I guess. There's a 10% chance the bullets explode for 10 holy damage on contact with the demon. Holy damage is the magical damage. So certain enemies have more of an immunity to that kind of thing I assume, but 10% chance for 10 holy damage is pretty good, especially if you're using things like SMGs. More bullets equal more chances for that to happen. And it's like a free crit, basically. It's not a crit because it's not doing double the damage, or 50% more damage, but for what it is, it's extra damage. And if you're using things like even your auto pistols, those are really good because it's just 10 free damage and if you're lucky, you'll get it. 
bloodlust. Killing demons will send her into a bloodlust, increasing all damage dealt by 5% for 5 seconds, and it can stack up to 5 times. So you can get up to 25% more damage, and it only lasts 5 seconds, which you would need to regenerate each stack after, you know, while that's going on. That's really, really good for the lockdowns, because you're going to get waves of enemies, you're going to be killing things one after the other. It's pretty good. But, for the sake of things, I'll be taking the XP, because that is the one that's worth more the earlier you get it. But if I have any crystals, I'll quickly show that being combined. Uh, play, upgrades. If I go into oaths here, just open this up. And I have one Lithia shard, so out of all that, I only got one shard. Sometimes you get like three, four of them, which would be like 12 of those little orange symbols down there at the end of every level. Sometimes I've gotten 27. But, yeah. So I can't put anything in. I could put, I guess, Lithios into SMG specials. You can see that I got 2% extra damage using SMGs. But yeah, that's it guys. This is Seraph. This is what I've been playing. It's going to be the only video I'm going to put up on this, but I will be streaming it more. So thank you guys for watching. Check this game out. I think it's 20% off until May 3rd. Right now it's only like 10, 80 something, and 90 something. So round that up to $11 USD. That's it. Remember to stay positive, have yourselves a great day, and I'll see you guys eventually, or something.